So did they show sure off day, Prabhu? No office today? Krishna Maharaj. No office, Maharaj. Today, today is a holiday here, Maharaj. Friday being a Friday, it's holiday, Maharaj here. So and also it was a Nash National Day, Maharaj, yesterday and day before yesterday here. So it was in a holiday here in Bari. Oh, you had three days holiday, huh? Yes, Maharaj. Wow. But no meeting, eh? You can't come together. Uh, no, Maharaj. So far, no. The government has not allowed uh, to gathering. So center remains closed. Yes, Maharaj. Do you have to pay rent? Yes, Maharaj. Oh, you still have to pay the rent, huh? Yes, Maharaj. Oh. Did he give reduction? Uh, some uh, places they have given reduction, Maharaj, but not all all the places. But one thing is, Maharaj, this uh, first three months, <clears throat> government has uh, given electricity and all those things free to the whole, uh, all the nationalities. Oh. Electricity, water, free, everything free. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. But you, you were working then as well? You're still going to work, everybody? Yes, Maharaj. Most of them are uh, uh, work and some have uh, work from home. Very less because this is all uh, here. It's uh, like constructions and all those areas. The work uh, they have to go. So it's no. There is no restriction nowadays from uh, one month uh, above. There is no restriction much. Only thing we have to take care of ourselves. We have to wear the mask and all those things. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, we can move around freely. There is nothing restriction. Did they have some cases of COVID there? It is reduced, Maharaj. Okay. Uh, it, it was very high before compared to the nowadays. It is very high. Now it is reduced, Maharaj. The positive cases are coming down. Okay. Is Ramadan already, Ra Ramadan's already passed, is it? Yes, Maharaj. It's already over. This year, I think it's in the month of uh, June, I believe, Maharaj. I'm not sure next year it's hmm. going to be. Maharaj, today we have a realization also. Uh, after the class, Maharaj. All right. Just maybe another half an hour, Maharaj, you have to bear with. Okay. Please, please. We'll take one, one minute of all the uh, devotees to get their realization about Bhakti Shastri. Uh -huh. Because this is going to be a last uh, session in the, our module. Yes, right. It's, it's the com we, completion of the Bhakti Shastri, right? Yes, Maharaj. You have finished all the modules. Yes, Maharaj. Some devotees are doing Bhakti Vai Bhav? Uh, not from uh, our uh, this group, Maharaj. Uh, there is other group, uh, previous to our group, that is, they are doing Maharaj. Uh -huh. So we can begin now? Yes, Maharaj. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Unmilitan Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Precharine 
Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavibio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hatvaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <clears throat> so we welcome everyone to our uh, study of the Nectar of Instruction for, for the Bhakti Shastri course. And of course, this will be the concluding class in this uh, Bhakti Shastri course and in the Nectar of Instruction we want to complete today. I thought what I'd like to do from the beginning of the class today, I thought we could just quickly overview the topics which were covered in the different uh, verses from the Nectar of Instruction. And I thought it would be nice to hear from you. I'd like to hear the individual devotees describe to me the main point of each of the verses. So, uh, I know I, a number of you, I think we have about six couples there, right, taking part would be nice, maybe we could have from one couple, they would like to tell us, first of all, what was in the first verse. What does the first verse cover in the Bhakti Shastri? Mm -hmm. Yes, who's going to speak? Yes, okay Prabhu, yes, please. Hare Krishna. This talks about six arches which uh, if one is able to control, um, he can become the, uh, the guru of the whole world or he can, be, he can um, have the whole world as his disciple. So the six arches are um, the vacho uh, vegam, the, the controlling of the speech. Manasa Krodha, there's the controlling of the mind and the controlling of the anger and, uh, and controlling of the uh, taste and the tongue, Jihwa Vegam and Udara Pasta Vegam, uh, the, 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 the arch of the belly and uh, the genitals. If anyone is able to control all these six arches out of these uh, elements of the body, um, he is eligible for having the whole world as his disciples. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, how, how do you find it to control? Do you think it's asking too much or it's not enough to be, a, you know, to be, to control these urges? Is it very demanding or is it not very demanding? It, it is quite demanding. In our, uh, in the uh, uh, minded uh, material body, uh, we are undergoing every moment in different circumstances. One moment we just feel that we are relinquishing everything and the next moment in order to make sure that we are able to swim across those material um, hurdles, uh, we just try to encounter that with uh, some kind of these urges again released, unleashed. It's not that very easy in this kind of material body. Uh, and it's especially living in this kind of material circumstances for us to deal with. So at times we just feel that we have to get rid of this and again go somewhere else. But again, it is not possible as everyone says that the prescribed duties have to be rendered. So in order to transact the prescribed duties uh, helplessly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, very nice. Certainly this time it could be quite stressing with all the lockdown, the, the COVID virus going around and so many dangers 
insecurity, being in insecure in, or insecure in our job and in our situations, it can be very stressing. So, certainly it's a challenge, controlling. But we're fortunate, we have a nice process to help us control, right? We have Lord Krishna, we have devotional service to take shelter of. Okay, so thank you very much, Prabhu. So, let's hear from another couple. They could describe to us text number two. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Second verse is Atyahara Prayasascha Prajal Bodhiya Magraha Jana Sangascha Laulascha Shada Bhakti Vinascha Ti and it, it, uh, translation of this verse is uh, there are six uh, if we do this for six activities then our uh, devotional service will be spoiled and the six activities are overeating and over collecting the wealth or money then uh, uh, over uh, endeavors also and uh, mm -hmm. unnecessary talking mundane talkings and uh, uh, Prajalbo, Niyamagraha, practicing over uh, too much uh, Niyamagraha, too much rules and regulation or uh, delay. So, or uh, take, it easy. take it easy, like uh, <laughs> practice. <laughs> and the fifth one is Jana Sangascha, bad association or good association with the devotees. And last one is Laulam. Mm -hmm. Means uh, greedy, too much greedy. Uh, so these six activities maybe spoil the devotional services. And from this, uh, we have learned. Human, uh, basically, Maharaj, in this human life is meant for uh, simple living and have being happy. So we should not collect uh, with more greed and collect and keep it with us. And continuation with this? Uh, this shloka, we can relate, Maharaj, with the uh, Ishopanishad uh, shloka that uh, the human being, uh, the quota is how much we have quota, we should take that much only. We should not greed much and more. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, we, there is Mahatma and uh, Duratma uh, differences we have given. Mahatma is basically a broad minded person, and Duratma is a triple minded. So that also we learned. And uh, going forward, yeah. That's it, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. How did it relate to the first verse? If we control our uh, vacha senses. vegam senses, the senses, then we can obtain the proper devotional service. If we do all these activities in more and more, if we will not control the activities, senses, senses then we will not get uh, devotional service. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, if these first, the urges mentioned in the first verse, if they go uncontrolled, then the result is what you described in the second text, right? All the problems come. So we have to be very careful. Okay, thank you very much. All right. So we have, let's have some of Prabhu call, tell us about text number three. We have some Prabhus, a number of men here. Can we hear from a man? Tell us the main point of text number three. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandar Pranam. Hare Krishna. This uh, text number three uh, talks about, uh, you know, favorable and unfavorable activities. Here it says, the six principles of favoring execution of uh, devotional services. Uh, first, uh, being enthusiastic. And second, endeavoring with uh, confidence. Third, being passion. Fourth, acting according to regulative principles, such as Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, so on. Number five, abandoning the association of, association of non-devotees. Number six, following the footstep of previous acharyas. These six principles undoubtedly, undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service, Maharaj. So how can we cultivate, how can I get enthusiastic 
I don't feel enthused. How can I become enthusiastic? Uh, we have to associate with the devotees, chant the rounds uh, uh, very uh, 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 promising way uh, without any fault. Then automatically Bhagavan uh, will give and Guru will uh, give the uh, path to get enthusiasm. What, what does this mean? Regulative principles. Uh, what is it? Tat tat karma pravartana. What is this? You know this? Tat tat karma pravartana? Um, uh, this is uh, God centered, Krishna centered uh, uh, activities. This is what Maharaj. Tat tat karma, right? Utsahan nischa yad dairyat. Utsahan nischa yad dairyat. Tat tat karma pravartanat. Sangat sadat tato vritti. Right? It's one of the six items. Tat tat karma pravartanat. Various uh, activities favorable for devotional service. So, what are these? Um. Uh, the, 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 we have there make, are uh, two uh, parts, two parts to it, right? Two parts to it. It's one of the questions in the closed book. There are two parts to Tata Karma Pravartana. Two parts. First part. Still not prepared, Maharaj. Sorry, Maharaj. <laughs> <laughs> It's Yama and Yama. Prema Maya, yes. Yes, you're going to, yes? Yama and Yama Maharaj. Yes, what, what's the Yama? What's the Yam? Uh, yama is uh, uh, things which we, uh, like the prohibition. Yama is something prohibition uh, for regulatory principles which we follow. Uh -huh. Which this is to be done. Okay. Yama is something which we, like, uh, which we have to do. So chanting, hearing, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. No, I think it, Yama is what we not to do, what we have to give up, the prohibition. And the Niyam is what we have to do. Do, yes. So what do we have to do? Chanting, hearing, Srimad Bhagavatam, association with the devotees. Okay. And, uh, right. Worship. And what's it, what do we not do? Uh, meat eating, no right. right. This is the two stages of tat tat karma pravartana, right? This is the two. Yes, and earlier, Mataji spoke about uh, niyamagraha, niyamagraha, right? Following the rules too strictly or not following them enough. So, can you tell us a bit more about that? How did Prabhupada adjust this? Uh, There's too much attachment to rules and regulations. So, how did Prabhupada adjust it? Can you give some examples? Examples of... Yeah. Of what examples then also? How did Prabhupada adjust the rules? Uh, by 16 rounds, like from 64 rounds, he came down to 16 rounds for devotees. Okay. And uh, um, uh, the yeah. women devotees, he, uh, ladies he ashram. Lady, uh, gave the women to perform arati. Yes. Uh, and yes, and uh, ladies ashram also. Yeah. Yes, right, good. Okay. Uh, very nice. Yes? Anything? Simple, simple rules and everything. Right, simple rules and regulations, basic, right? But he kept the principles, adjusted the detail, but kept the principle. Yes, kept the principle. Yes. What, what's the principle? What's the main principle? The uh, most, most important principle? Krishna mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Always remember Krishna. Yes, always remember Krishna, right. Always remember Krishna. Right, right. That's, a, that's the main principle. Always remember Krishna, never forget him. Never forget him. Right, that's the main principle. So Prabhupada adjusted details.
but the main principle to remember Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we'll go ahead, text number four. We'll ask some Mataji. Maybe there's some Mataji there who can answer number four. What's verse number four? We have a number of Matijis there. Anybody can, any Mataji would like to volunteer? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, uh, in fourth uh, verse, it is said, uh, offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasad and offering prasad are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. It's a six loving exchanges like gifts, secrets, and prasadam, which we uh, give and we take. Like, okay, it's the biggest gift. So, what's the biggest gift? What do we have to give to people? Contributing and distributing the holy name of the Lord Maharaj. Right. Yes. So give the holy name. Yeah. I have to give the holy name. Yes, Maharaj. And we have to be careful about uh, accepting charity from people. Yes, Maharaj. Right. What's the main consideration? When we accept charity from people, what should we be careful? Uh, we should be careful if we are getting any charity, it should be used for uh, Krishna's and Guru's service. Yes, right. That's the main point, right? Everything should be used for the service of Krishna, nothing for our own sense gratification. Right? Yes, if if you give the devotee, if you give some devotee a new handphone, you don't want to see the devotee using the handphone to watch Bollywood movies, right? He, yes, can, he, right. Can, he can use it for service of Krishna, but he shouldn't, yes. he shouldn't get into Maya. We don't want to yes, facilitate someone going into Maya. All right, yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay, we'll go ahead. Let's hear text number five. Who has not spoken yet? What about Tri Tribanga Gopi? Is it? Who is it? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Do you know text number five? Uh, yes, I'll try Maharaj. Yes. Um, so here the text number five is actually speaking about how to deal with the different types of devotees with the Kanishta, Madhyama and the Uttama Adhikari devotees. So Rupa Goswami is saying that uh, with the Kanishta Adhikari we should mentally honor respect to them because they are chanting the holy name and we should uh, uh, offer our humble obeisances uh, uh, to the Madhyama Adhikari and um, we should do we should do service, sir. Humbly serve the uh, Uttama Adhikaris and hear from his. Um, we should hear from him uh, by rendering service to him. So um, the Kanishta Adhikaris are actually they have very less uh, faith, weak weak faith. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, asked Peter. <coughs> Sorry, Maharaj, one second. Yeah, weak in faith. And uh, they are knowledge also weak. And they cannot uh, offer argument to the oppo oppo opposite uh, opinion. And then the Madhya Madhikaris, they have strong faith and they, they have good knowledge on the scriptures and they can convince the other par, other opposing party also. Then the Uttama Adhikaris are very strong in faith and strong in knowledge also. And they will be always thinking how to expand the Krishna conscious movement uh, and they will be always uh, chanting the holy name of the Lord. Um, 
Okay. And tell me more about tell me about the, the vision of the Madhyamadikari. The Madhyamadikari. How does he relate to different people? The Madhyama Adhikari. Generally, there's four you know, four aspects. First of all, how does he see Krishna? How does he see the Lord? He he sees Krishna in every object, Maharaj. Well, no, that's uh, Uttama, right? Uttama. Uttama will see Krishna in everyone. But Madhyam, he sees the deity. He'll worship the deity with love, right? He gives his love to the deity, worships the deity. But what else? How does he relate to other people? He'll be friendly, he'll be friendly to the uh, other devotees with the neophytes. Well, he'll make friends with the devotees who are his peers. You are friendly. Yes, same, same mathematical. Yes. And for the neophyte, what will he do? He, he'll show mercy. To yes, he'll give mercy to them, right. He'll give mercy to the neophyte. And what about the atheists and the blasphemers or the non devote people no interest in Krishna consciousness? We ignore marriage? Yeah, he just ignores them. Yeah, just leave them. <laughs> Stay away. Leave them alone. Because if we try to disturb them, they get angry and they blaspheme and make offenses, more offenses. So just stay away from them. Okay. So Madhyama may be often, they're weak, a little weak in being able to convince. The Uttama he can convince, but the Madhyam he may not be able to convince so well. But he has knowledge, but he's just not so ex expert in convincing others. And the Kanista, he just sees God. Where does he see God, the Kanista? The temple, only the temple deities. Yeah, right. He thinks God's just in the day. He, can't, he doesn't have much respect for devotees. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. All right. So going on, going ahead. Text number six. Who do we have next? Who's this? Sudarshan Nanda. Who is it? Yes. Num text number six. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I am not in the. Uh, uh, position to tell Dr. Prabhu, I'm only, I am uh, only, Maharaj, I am only here. Oh, you're, Sorry. you're only hearing, eh? Okay. Yeah, okay. I am driving. Okay. Oh, you're driving. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm the native uh, vacation. <laughs> okay. What about Prema Maya? What about Prema Maya? Can, can you help us? Text number six. Prima Maya? No? No answer. Yes, okay, yes. Text number six, do you remember the, what's it about? Yeah, Maharaj, like... Um, oh, you already answered, right? You, we already heard oh, no. from you. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> I should ask somebody else. Let, give somebody else a chance to speak. Yeah. Let me see who else have we got here. Okay, let me see. Prasanna Chitta. Yes, Prasanna Chitta. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Gopinath Prabhu. Yeah, Prasanna Chitta Gopinath. Do you know text number six? You can tell me the main content there. Hare Krishna Maharaj, not prepared Maharaj. Oh, not prepared yet. Okay. What about Shiva? Shiva Prabhu? Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu, Hare Krishna. Uh, text number six uh, deals with uh, the instructions for uh, dealing with uh, senior Vaishnavas like Guru Maharaj, when they, uh, how to deal with them. Uh, we would accept them as uh, the final authority. Uh, we should not argue with them. Whatever they say, we should uh, take it in by our matter. 
What was the actual verse about though? Rupa Goswami. He gave an example. I'm sorry, Maharaj, I have not read these texts before. I, I heard it from you, but I have not gone through them. Uh, okay, text number six. What about Vasant Nayak Prabhu? Vasant Nayak? Yes, Hare Krishna. Do you know text number six? I, I will uh, try from Vijay. I have not heard that much. I will read first this... Uh, being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a disease, or an infirm body. According to the ordinary vision, such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure duty, but despite such seeming defects, the body of the pure duty cannot be polluted. It is exactly like the waters of the Ganges. Which, which sometime during the rainy seasons are fully full of bubbles, foam and mud. The Ganges water, water do not become polluted. Those who are advanced in the spiritual understanding will bath in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. Here is uh, stated uh, uh, the pure devotee is like a Ganga water. In a rainy season, uh, it is lo look like mud and it like uh, 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 bubbled and it look polluted. But it is not a polluted. It is a, a still pure water. So like a pure dev devotee who is in the Uttama he is a, he may be is in the de disease or any a bodily discomfort position, but he is in the pure uh, consciousness of the Krishna service. And he is always serving the uh, 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 people and the Krishna. Because uh, he is he's, uh, he's, uh, he's all time the Krishna consciousness. So, all the uh, whoever Kanishta or Madhyama Adhikari, he is uh, saying this is all coming, we, we have to serve them as the Krishna, Krishna, they are all beloved to the Krishna. So, he is one responsibility to take all the Krishna or uh, Madhyama Adhikari or all people to back to the Godhead. That one uh, I have understood on my mind, uh, Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu, thank you. Yes, we don't, we don't, we don't look at the external features, right? We see Hanuman, you know, Hanuman's a monkey. So, you know, we don't think monkeys are very intelligent or very good looking or anything. But Hanuman's a great devotee. And similarly, Garuda. Garuda's a bird and may eat fish sometimes. <laughs> I fight with the snakes, and <laughs> but she's a great Garuda is a great devotee. They do great service for the Lord. So we don't, and we see there's devotees like Bilvamanga Thakur. He was blind, but he was a great devotee. And Gorkishore Das Babaji, he was almost illiterate. But he was a very great devotee. So we don't attach any great significance to the external features. Oh, the, oh this person, he's v born in a low-class family, or he's, you know, untouchable, and he's a videshi, whatever. We have to see the internal nature. 
So that and the Rupa Goswami gives that nice example about the water of the Ganges. So we bathe in the water of the Ganges without considering, because we know it's Ganga, Ganga Jal, very powerful. It's the water which washed the lotus feet of Lord Vamana Dev. So we're happy to bathe in that water. All right? Then text number seven. We'll go ahead. Who would like to speak on text number seven? Maybe we'll hear from Rasa Purna, Rasa Purnima, Mataji, is it? Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have spoken. Oh, you already Krishna spoken. Krishna. Okay. What about Raja Rajani? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanna Bhakti Hare Krishna, Dhanna Bhakti Maharaj. Maharaj, in this uh, text and uh, it is, uh, it is being instructed how to chant the holy name and progress in bhakti. And uh, in the text, it is in the translation, it is clearly mentioned that the holy name, the character, the pastimes and activities of Krishna's are all transcendently sweet and give an example like sugar candy. And uh, because our tongue is diseased, because of the material, materially afflicted, our tongue is materially afflicted. So that's why it is not able to test that sugar candy. So example is given in jandis or avidya. Okay, vidya is like jandis, which is actually engross a person, and because of his cannot test anything sweet. So similarly, similarly here also, if if somebody somebody is engrossed with this. Uh, materialistic ignorance, and he cannot release the holy name, the character, pastimes, and activities. And here instruction is given, given that if somebody actually simply chant carefully every day, this then this, uh, this natural release will occur within his tongue. And that this, gradually, this disease gradually will be destroyed from the root itself. So here instruction is given that uh, the bhajana kriya is most important and then with this uh, all, the, all the four regulative principles somebody will have to observe and this carefully he has to chant every day then slowly slowly or gradually all this disease will be root out from one's which is Pray Krishna Maharaj. Okay. How long is it going to take? How long is it going to take me? Because I've got, I've got some jaundice, I don't have the taste for the holy name. So how long will I need to get the taste? Maharaj, it is actually a gradual process that uh, being described here. Initially we have to have some sraddha, faith, and then, then sadhu sangha is required, and sadhu sangha will take us to the bhajana kriya process. And that bhajana kriya process will definitely Bring that uh, create that uh, that anartha nibruti will take place, and once unless and until this anartha nibruti will take place, then only we then without that we cannot progress further. So that constant this is a bhajana kriya process is actually a, it, it, it is a regular uh, rigorous process for a kanista dikari what we have seen, the, and for him actually to progress, this process has to be very uh, rigorous, and then that will actually. In this process, this anartha nibruti will take place, and anartha nibruti takes place, then only he will be blessed. Okay. So, wh 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 what kind of? How will I know if I'm making advancement? Then the next process is nista. Then nista. After the nista, he will uh, come to the ruchi stage, and the ruchi stage he will test the holy name. Hari Bol, Hari Krishna Maharaj. How do I know if I'm making advancement? The, the symptoms actually, if somebody, um, Maharaj, what you, Maharaj, can you please repeat? I want to know how how will I know if I'm making advancement in my chanting? Um, if I get test when I'm chanting, if I guess, just uh, test means if I want to chant it, because I think that I want to chant more and more and more, and I get pleasure out of it. And then 
definitely I am getting the test, Maharaj. I think this is the this is this is the way I can understand that yes, I am developing the test. What are the, what stages are there in chanting? Stages of chanting, but yeah, there's there's like three levels of chanting the holy name. One is namavas, namavas stage. Yeah. What's before what's before namavas? Namaprad, first with namavas stage. So then we have namavas stage and suddha nam stage. What's the main What's the main apparat? Uh, while chanting. Yeah. What's yeah. the What's the big apparat that we all commit? Uh, while chanting, we are actually not focusing on the holy name. That is one of the apparat we commit. Right. Because we should not do any other thing while chanting. Inattention, right? The in attention, in yes. attention while in attention. chanting. Right. right. Yeah, we have to try to chant with proper attention, right? Yes, Maharaj. We give the attention to other things, distraction, yes. right? They identified different root causes of inattention. One was apathy, yes. and another was uh, distraction, easily distracted. Yes, Maharaj. So. I have to try to focus on the holy name. Okay, very good. Thank yes, you Maharaj. very much. Thank you, Maharaj. So, then we go ahead to number eight. We spoke about text number eight in the last class. Who remembers text number eight? Who has not spoken so far? Dandot Pranam Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna. Verse number 8 is Tanna Marupa Charitati Sukirtina Nusprutyo, which giving a meaning is basically this is the essence of all the advices of given by Rupa Goswami, as he himself is indicating. That once and that advice, one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Vraja, Gulagurundavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of Lord's beloved devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. So in a sense, uh, it is uh, telling that we should uh, uh, devote ourselves fully to Krishna, 24 hours, uh, as we discussed earlier, the original instruction for chanting was 24 hours. Because of Prabhupada's mercy, it has been reduced to 64 rounds and then he reduced, make it to 16 rounds to all of us. But the basic requirement is we should always remember Krishna, whether we are chanting on beads or not chanting, but we should always remember Krishna, Krishna's pastime, and always get involved in the activities related to Krishna consciousness. So is this verse relevant to us in Iskon? Are we supposed in Iskon, are we supposed to go to Vrindavan? Uh, Prabhu Prabhupada says wherever you chant name of uh, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra and you do Sankirtan, that place is uh, Vrindavan for us because then Krishna comes with us, Krishna dances with us, and we feel the presence of Krishna all around where we are. Yes, right. We create the Krishna conscious atmosphere. We create the atmosphere of Vrindavan. This is Prabhupada's mission to bring Krishna consciousness everywhere. We don't have to go to Vrindavan itself, but we have to create the mood, the Vrindavan atmosphere, develop our consciousness of Krishna. Okay. Right, so, now, right now, as Prabhupada says that uh, you distribute the books and when people read the books, they also will be having similar uh, similar taste, like they can be like living in Vrindavan. Right now, like uh, because of uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita Advent Day, now marathon is going on and uh, as we all are contributing towards the distribution of books to all the new people 
and uh, trying to getting involved them in the process very good yes yeah i know the devotees in the middle east there they contribute a lot for the book distribution they give a lot of support to the devotees in india by their financial support the devotees in india are able to distribute the books in a very big manner because of the aid which they get from the devotees over there in balaram desh and places like that so you're doing wonderful service very nice okay. yes Hare krishna Saying that Balaram Desh uh, congregation from there, you must have heard it. Um, Bangladesh, Pilet uh, is it means the birth, uh, original place of Lord Chaitanya descendant. Their Iskand temple has taken initiative 50,000 Bhagavad Gita to distribute among the people of 143 family, uh, 143 tea gardens, 90 percent are people are uh, Hindu. Among them, young generation and families are involved. So this almost 20,000 Bhagavad will be distributed to them. And we are started like I spoke with Maharaj, who is involved in this uh, huge activities. And we are going to uh, help Maharaj and that whole congregation for Bhagavad Gita distribution. Apart from that, uh, tribal area in Bangladesh, we have taken an initiative, 1,500 Bhagavad Gita in Bangladesh is called Chittagong site, tribal area, to distribute 1,500 Bhagavad Gita within a month for Prabhupada book distribution marathon. Okay, so, very good. Uh, yes, very nice. We're happy to hear the devotees in Bangladesh are getting books and they're able to distribute them very liberally to the people everywhere, even the tribal people. Yes. To save them and keep them in Krishna consciousness. All right, so we're going to go ahead. We're go we have to look at this, this final section of verses, which we have here. I didn't get opportunity to read the opinion of the text. Okay, so you can read text number nine. Okay, thank you. You read text number nine, tell me the main point. Um, the transcendental world, because the Lord appeared there, superior to Mathura is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasulila past time. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhana Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Lord Krishna at the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all the super excellent Sri Radha Kunda stands supreme, for it is overflowed with the Am Ambrosial Nactarian Prema of Lord of Go uh, Go uh, Gokula Sri Krishna. Well, this is the intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this divine Radha Kunda, which is situated at the foot of Govardhana Hill. Right. Here, is, uh, here is Lord. Should I continue, Maharaj? Now, just tell me, what's the main point? What What is Rupa Goswami saying in your own words? Don't read. Just tell me. Okay. Rupa Goswami is, is giving a hierarchy, right? Yes, correct. One after one, which is superior to each other. Right. So, how did he begin? Which one did he begin, begin with? He is, he is began with Mathura. No, before Mathura, what? Vaikuntha? Uh, even before Vaikuntha? Uh, I'm not sure, Maharas. The material world, right? He said, Vaikuntha is yeah. superior to the material world. Yeah. Right? Correct. Why? Why is Vaikuntha superior to the material world? 
because they are you full time you are uh, uh, associating with lord yeah why why are they associating with the lord how did they get because to how did they get to the vaikuntha no the devotional practice devotional service yes because they're all pure devotees vaikuntha they're all pure devotees in vaikuntha right material world but not pure devotee but conditioned souls so vaikuntha is superior to the material world correct right right then superior to vaikuntha is what mathura why ah uh, mathura because uh, the krishna transcendental uh, uh, activities was there because in the forest krishna has there uh, played with his uh, cowherd boy cowherd boyfriend no 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 you're jumping the gun you're jumping the gun you're going too fast but not at the forest yet we're still at mathura Why is Mathura superior to Vaikuntha? Mm. Not very clear, Maharaj. Because Lord Krishna took his birth there. I appeared there, yes. Yes, his birth. He took his birth there in Mathura. It's his Janma Janma Bhumi. Appeared. Right. Correct. So very important place, Mathura. Lord Krishna right. appeared there. Right. And then superior to, superior to Mathura is Vrindavan. Vrindavan. Why? Because twelve great forests are there. So. Radhashukanam. So. Radhashukanam. What's so special about having forests? Because in that uh, 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 Madhuban, then Madhuvala, which are Lord has uh, had their pastimes. Which pastimes? Krishna's uh, Krishna's pastimes. Like what? What did he do in the forest? In that forest, he has uh, uh, that his cowherd friend, Gopi Gopi Bhav uh, Gopi's uh, Rasalila. Yes, Go Rasalila is performed there in the forest also. We just celebrated just last week, two weeks ago. We had the Rasa Purnima. Right. Right. Krishna does Rasa Lila in the forests of Vrindavan, so the forests of Vrindavan are superior to Mathura. And what's superior to the forests of Vrindavan are what? Govardhan Hill. Why? Because Krishna has lived that Govardhan Hill on his uh, little finger seven days and give the sh shelter for the whole inhabitants of the villages. Shelter from what? Sorry. Shelter. Why did they need shelter? Uh, because Indra, Indra has a uh, was jealous, or because or angry, because people did not worship to him instead of that they worship to Govardhan Hill. So Indra was a uh, great uh, anger. He has called Kavatoga the rain to pour it uh, on uh, uh, to hold the villages. Yes. And to protect them, and to protect them, then Krishna has to do that. Right. Okay. And is Krishna happy to do that? Krishna was uh, happy to. He was not very happy, but he wants to also break the ego of Indra. Uh, actually, Krishna is also happy because he gets an opportunity to be with all the gopis and all the cowherd boys. Everyone, they can all be together for seven days and seven nights. So it was seven very, it was very good for Krishna. He was happy. Because gopis were always unhappy. Krishna is going every day to the forest. They don't see him all day. So now, when Krishna picks up the Govardhan Hill, they're all together for seven days and nights. They can be together. Right? Which which hand did Krishna use to pick up Govardhan Hill? Left hand. Which which finger? Little finger. Right. Yes. Only seven days. Yes. And, and right hand he played the flute for whole seven days. <laughs> okay, and then superior to what's is anything higher than Govardhan Hill? Yes, Radha Kund. Why? Uh, 
um, because Simoti, since Simoti Radharani had uh, uh, Krishna and Radharani, they had a loving affair in uh, Dutti Bilal. Yes. Also in that uh, Radhakul. Yes. Krishna and Radharani can be more private at Radhakund. Not so many people, not so many people there. When Krishna does Rasa Leela, there's many gopis. But when they come to Radhakund, there's only a few. There's only just Krishna and Radharani and a few very intimate associates. So it's a very special place. So that the right. Radha Kund is very very important. Right. Okay. So and also, and also, my model, I don't know if I am adding your extra line here. Uh, in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he went to Vrindavan during that time, Lord was looking for Radha Kund, and he asked all the inhabitants they could not say. Then then they said the jungle there are some ponds, small rejected. So Lord himself went there, and when he saw that he gone in complete in trance. Then he said, here is the Radha Kund and here is the uh, Sham Kund. So Lord Chaitanya basically reinvented or refined this uh, two Kunds, two Kunds. Yes. Yes, that's right. Lord Chaitanya personally showed us the Radha Kund. He personally revealed it. The devotees, they didn't know. So, just to, to bring to your attention, like there's a... You know, other people... They may go to Radhakund. Other Sampradayas, they go to Radhakund, but they go to Radhakund because of Krishna. But we go to Radhakund because of Srimati Radharani. Radharani's position is very, very special in our Sampradaya. We give great, great importance to Srimati Radharani. So the Radha Kund is very special. Other people, they go to Radha Kund, they think, oh yeah, Krishna. They, they're more just Krishna, Krishna. But they don't understand really the significance of Srimati Radharani. But the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they give special importance to Srimati Radharani. Because she is the personification of Ladini Shakti. Pure, loving service to Krishna. And we want to get the mercy and the blessings of Srimati Radharani. So going to Radha Kund is very, very significant for a devotee. Okay, so thank you very much. We'll go Maharaj, ahead. Yeah, one more thing, yeah. uh, Maharaj. Uh, in our Sampradha, like there are many places, many people or many devotees, when they go, they go and try to take the bits of uh, Radha Kund. But we have been, they wanted to take the deep in Radha Kund. But we have been in our year, we do not want to take deep in Radha Kund. We will just take a water and then put it in our head instead of dipping into the water. Well, if you read the notes, I've given the notes about this. If you read the notes, we've talked about that. We explained that see, when the devotees first went there, they, they took bath and they played. They played, they played around, they were splashing each other. They were not taking bath in the proper mood. So when you go to take bath at Radha Kund, you have to take bath in a very pure, in a very, very pure consciousness. You can't just go there and just play around. It's not just like going to the beach and swimming in the sea. So you have to be very conscious and careful. When Prabhupada heard the devotees were going there, he said, they are kicking Radharani. They are kicking her in the face. So he said, now, and he, so Prabhupada told devotees, don't take bath there anymore, because you don't have the proper mood. But it's, in the, it's here in the nectar of instruction that is very beneficial to take bath there. So you, have, you, sh you, can, you can take bath, but you have to get permission from your guru. If your guru gives you permission, then you can bathe there. If he doesn't give you permission, then don't bathe there. So there are some gurus, some gurus they give permission and some gurus they don't. So you have to, you have to find out for yourself what, what is your guru's mood on this. You see, it varies from person to person. Okay. 
All right, we'll go ahead. Let's, oh wait, there's some questions here, text number nine. Oh, list it, hierarchy, okay, we did that. Why is Srila Rupa Goswami given much stress to Radhakund? Why did Srila Rupa Goswami give much stress to Radhakund? Because Lord Chaitanya wanted it revealed. Because of Lord Chaitanya, because it was very dear to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya wanted, wanted to find it and when he found it he took bath there. And so it's a very, very important place. Lord Chaitanya wants us to understand the importance of Radhakund. So that's why Rupa Goswami gives stress, because of Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is the teacher, the guru of Rupa Goswami. So, okay. Even, even, even Lord Chaitanya gave instruction to dig that and excavated by six Goswami. And six Goswami, they basically uh, Rupa Goswami and Raghunath uh, Das Goswami. They are the one who took that uh, in charge to dig it, Radhakund, and mm. at the instruction of Lord Chaitanya. Right, right. Yeah, they excavated it. They, they yeah, stayed they there yeah. and they got donations, people gave donations and developed nice Radhakund. Okay, right. so we'll go ahead. We'll ask now, we're going on to text number 10. Let's have somebody else read. Who would like to read? Who has not read? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Manaji, please read. Yes, you can tell me what is being described here. Translation shall I read, Maharaj? No, just tell me in your own words. In this uh, uh, karmibhya means uh, uh, fruity workers. All type of fruity workers means who, ha who have uh, knowledge, that is jnanis. Well, who is before the jnanis? Start, jnanis. At the, start at the bottom, right? The, the last verse, we had the hierarchy of the holy places. Now, now we're having the hierarchy of devotees, or different people, right? So it starts with the, first of all, the karmi, materialist people, non-devotees, right? And so among all the karmis, some people are, there are different, ki different kinds of karmis, right? Yes, ma'am. What kinds, what's the difference? There are different kinds of fruit of workers. One that means who, who work for their material with their fruitive activities. Yeah. Who work for their fruitive activities. Yep. Yeah. But there's different. They are the lowest. Uh, huh? They are the lowest uh, among the other uh, devotees. But there's different kinds of karmis. Among the karmis, different. Some karmis are actually v karmis. Yeah, v karmis. They are the lowest because they don't uh, follow the scriptures, Vedas. And so, what do the karmis do? Uh, karmis, uh, they follow the Lord, they and uh, believe in the God, but they expect uh, from the Lord uh, desire. Yes, they, 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 they do karma kandi, they do rituals, they do activities according to scriptures to get some benefit. Yeah, they, they worship demigods. Right. right. For, uh, people they, that they yeah, they may do. They may worship Krishna, but they, they have a material desire. Okay, so higher than karmi are who? Gyanis, Mara. Yeah. And who's, who's the best of the gyanis? 
Bhakta, the, the person who uh, do devotional service. You know the verse in the Bhagavad Gita? Talks about jnanis, yes. people in knowledge. Bahunam Gyanma Bahunam Gyanma Bahunam Gyanavan Ante Gyanavan Bahunam Gyanavan Ante Gyanavan Mam Prapadyate Vasudeva Sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudurlabha. Yeah, what's the meaning? As like uh, among the, uh, the the devotee who understands that Vasudeva is the uh, highest, uh, the cause of all causes, and who surrenders unto him. Is the uh, best devotee, is the Uttama devotee. Yeah, one who is actually in knowledge. He surrenders. Yeah, one who is knowledge, yes, Maharaj. This, yes. this verse is about the goal of knowledge. The goal of knowledge is what? So the goal Krishna of knowledge Vasudeva. is. Vasudeva Sarvamiti Maharaj. Yeah, surrender to Krishna. Vasudev, right? Yes, Maharaj. So? Those who have surrendered to Krishna, they're devotees, right? Yes, yes. So, who are the best of the, what's the different kinds of devotees? There are many devotees. Who are the best devotees? Right, what does, what, what does the verse say? Um, one who has taken many, many births no. and uh, who has that's, ultimately that's, realized... That's the goal of knowledge. Now we're talking about devotees. What's the perfection of devotion? What's the goal of devotion? To reach Surrend surrendering to Krishna. Krishna and to reach Him. To reach. How do you reach Krishna? What's the qualification? By serving Him, by serving him and devotional service. You have to develop love. Prema. Prem, yeah, prem, yes. Prema. Prem Ponarto Mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. Right? So, who, have, who has developed the Prem? Who has developed love? Which devotees? Who, has the, who, who, has the, who, are, the, who are the greatest devotees of Krishna? Who, what did Lord Chaitanya say? The three categories, one uh, like Pratama, Madhama and Uttama Adhikari. So no, Uttama no, Adhikari no, 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 but beyond all that, higher than that, okay. much higher than, who are the greatest devotees? Of, the gopis, right, the gopis of Vrindavan, right, the people of Vrindavan, they have the greatest love for Krishna, the people of Vrindavan, different devotees of Vrindavan. And of all the devotees in Vrindavan, of all the gopis, who has the... Srimati Radharani has the greatest love for Krishna. So this is a hierarchy among the devotees, right? Different devotees, different levels. So, uh, it mentioned actually, it was mentioned earlier, text number, going back to text number eight, it, it asks us for, give some examples of perfect devotees, perfect of all pure devotees, but in different rasas, right? Yeah, right? Who's in Shantaras? Do you know any devotees in Shantaras? Who's in Shantaras? Madhiji, uh, who knows which devotees are in Shantaras? Maharaj. Yes. No loving exchange. No loving exchange. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but who are these? Can you give example? Krishna Maharaj. Krishna's fluid uh, dress or like I know. Krishna's flute, yeah. Any... All parrots are... Who? All. All parrots. The parrots. Krishna. Parrots are all in Santa Ras. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe the parrots, huh? The parrots, maybe the the cows, the trees. Santaras means they're attracted by the beauty of Krishna, but 
they may not do any service. They're, they're, they're not engaged in any active service, but they're attracted by the beauty of Krishna. They're pure devotees. Or Sanat Kumars can be considered Maharaj? Like, yeah, know, yeah, but they're not in Vrindavan. Yeah, okay. The, you see, these, this, is, this is talking about, Rupa Goswami is describing about Goloka. The four Kumars, not, they're not in Goloka. They go to Vaikuntha. They don't go to Goloka. They're not, they're not like that, you see. The nine Yogendras are also Shantaras, but they don't go to Goloka. So the examples are all in relation to uh, Raganuga Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti is only in Goloka. It's only with Krishna in Goloka, in Vrindavan. So the four Kumaras, nine Yogendras, they may be in Shantaras, but they don't go there. That's the difference. Okay, so Chantaras, we've got Krishna's flute, you've got maybe the cows, the trees. And then, who's in Dasharas? Who are the devotees in Vrindavan, in Dasharas? Okay, you know? Recently, recently we celebrated Damodar Lila, and there are two brothers there in Dasharas. Who? Two brothers. Manakubara Manakriva. In Dasharas? Yeah. Because they are unlimited, they surrendered to Lord when they came out from the trees. And they surrendered to Lord and then they, they pleaded to Lord and then Krishna blessed them, then they go back to their Lukas. No, they did so they didn't stay. They went back to Vaikuntha. Yeah. They went back to heavenly planets. They're not in Go they're not in Braja. The Lord blessed them to be. The Lord blessed them. To, huh? Who, who are Krishna's? Who's the Krishna's servants in Vrindavan? The Gopas they serve sometimes. Maharaj, who? Massaging the feet of the lotus. No, Krishna. No, they're friends. The Gopas are friends with Krishna. They're not servants. Huh? Yeah, that's a They're more into friendship. Shikkhas. I'm talking about Dasharas. Who are the servants? Chitraka, Chitraka, Patraka. Chatrak, Patrak, Raptak. Yes. Ah. Prabhupada mentions all this. You read the text. It's in the purport. It's important. You should know. You should be able to give these examples. This is also for the closed book. This mentioned here. Closed book. Text number eight. Three examples of perfect devotees in Shantaras, Dasharas, and Sakyaras. All right, who's in Sakyaras? Sakyaras. What are their names? Tell me their names. Some Sudama. Sudama. Sri Dhamma. Sri Dhamma. Sudama, Sri Dhamma, hi. also who else? Who? The Krishna. Baladeva. Who? Baladeva. Baladeva. Well, Baladeva's in all the rasas. He's Krishna's very special devotee. Yeah. But who are the particular cowherd boys? We could say there's Subal, there's Sri Dham, Stoka Krishna. Rishabha, like that, there are many cowherd boys. But Prabhupada mentions in the purport, he mentions particular ones. Okay. okay, so we've got the hierarchy. Then the go why are the gopis considered superior? Why are the gopis the best of all the devotees? We said Krishna all the Maharaj. yes, because they don't don't know anything other than satisfying Krishna. Okay. Though though Krishna put them into suffering like separation, but uh, they could not, could not forget Krishna. They couldn't forget Krishna. Even when Krishna leaves them, even when Krishna goes away from them and hides from them, they they can't forget Krishna. Right? What, what did the gopis do 
what was their special qualities which they did to show their love for Krishna. What did they sacrifice? What did they sacrifice? You know, the gopis, they're, they're, they're very respectable ladies, they're very cultured, and they're very chaste, but when their families also. What? Not only families, it's self-respect. It is self-respect. Okay, okay. One person at a time. Don't argue, please. Keep calm. Just wait. Let one person speak. What did you say, Prabhu, before that? They gave up self-respect? Yes, Maharaj. You know, who said something before you though? There was yeah. some. I told family. They what? they left their when they when they listen the transcendental sound of the Venu Venu Dwani and they leave everything and they they run they run for the rasa. At that time they leave their families, they don't care for their families. Even uh, even they know that they are, if they leave away their family, their house in night, they will be considered unjust, but they are not even bothered about that. So yeah. they can sacrifice their anything and everything for Krishna. Right. They sacrifice their name, their chastity, everything for Krishna. That is the nature of their pure love for Krishna. That they were willing to give up everything for Krishna. They didn't think about their I own... Give an example, yes? Like on one of the occasions, like there is a story, it is from somewhere. So it says like Krishna developed a headache and then the, the medicine for that was the dust from the lotus feet uh, from the Vishnava or the, or the pure devotees. Then everybody refused. But uh, the gopis of Raja, they told you take even tons of the sand from our lotus feet. If it is curing Krishna, even if we are ready to go to hell even. Yes, right. The gopis were willing to go to hell for Krishna. They didn't think about their self. They are willing to... You, and the brahmins thought, if, oh, if the dust from our feet goes on Krishna's head, we will go to hell. But the, go, the gopis say, it doesn't matter. We just want Krishna to cure his headache. We don't mind. And so that is real sacrifice, right? That's the pure love of the gopis. All right, and then we also ask a question in relation to text number 10. What about this? What is Vipralamba Seva? Who knows? Vipralamba. Let's hear somebody who didn't speak yet. We'll ask uh, Sushanta Maharaj. Sushanta? Sushanta, can you tell us? Maybe Aravinda, Aravind, Aravindangri. Aravindangri Krishna. No? Okay. Deepapriya, Deepapriya Gandharva. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thinking of Krishna in separation, serving Krishna in separation. All right, yes, separation from Krishna. Can you give us some examples about this? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who was he in separation from? Um, in the mood of Radharani. Um, in the mood of Radharani, he was what? Uh, he, um, he was thinking of Krishna in separation. All right, yes, he's thinking of Krishna in separation. So, do we also do Vipralamba Seva? We try to. How does this apply to our own service? Right? We want to develop the mood of the gopis. 
Yes, Maharaj. So what, the, what is that mood of the gopis? Uh, to always serve Krishna, to always think of Krishna. But the gopis are always in separation from Krishna, right? Uh, to develop detachment from material life, material things. Yes. And do the gopis want to enjoy Krishna themselves? Uh, they wanted to please Krishna. So how do they, how do, they, did, but did they t try to get Krishna for themselves? Like, I want to be the, I should be the one to be with Krishna. Is that the thinking of the gopis? No, Maharaj. Uh, they, they wanted everyone to have, to uh, have the association of Krishna. They wanted others to have the association of Krishna. Right, yeah. The gopis are always thinking, let Radharani be with Krishna, right? They want to make arrangements that Radharani should be with Krishna. But what does Radharani try to do? She tries to engage other gopis in the service of Krishna. Yeah, she wants, says, oh, let other gopis, they can also have, a to have time to be with Krishna. Right. And so, how does that apply to a devotee in ISKCON? That mood? Uh, we should try to engage uh, other devotees um, in Krishna's service. We should try to give opportunities. If we get opportunity, we should try to maybe give it to new devotees or other devotees. Y uh, yes, right. Yeah. Right. Just like we said, we're distributing books, we're giving books to people, we want them to get Krishna. Prabhupada, a devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, when we go for book distribution, he said, is that like the mood of the gopis? And Prabhupada said, yes. He said, this is the mood of the gopis, to give Krishna to others. Not that Krishna is mine, I will enjoy him. Right? Krishna doesn't like that mood. If we become proud or selfish, Krishna doesn't like that. But if we have the mood to give Krishna to others and to make sacrifices to give Krishna to others, then that mood is very pleasing to Krishna. Right? So, so that is why Vipralamba Seva is uh, important in ISKCON, that we also have that mood. And Prabhupada also taught us, uh, he, he quoted his own spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. He used to say, don't try to see Krishna yourself, but try to act in such a way that Krishna will come to see you. Right? We want to attract Krishna. We try to attract Krishna to come. And how to attract Krishna? By service, by doing nice service for Krishna. Okay? All right? So we'll go ahead. Who would like to read text number 11? Who has not read yet? Anybody? <laughs> we don't have many people here today. Maybe Chidananda Prabhu, you can read text number 11. Chidananda Janardhan Prabhu. No, not there. All right, Pushpanjali. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I am not prepared. Excellent. As we have said, Maharaj. Yeah, can you read text 11? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, I am not prepared. Mataji, what is said, Maharaj? Please raise your hand, Mataji. Uh, Tribhanga Prabhu, Maharaj, Tribhanga Prabhu, want to. She wants to read? Tribhanga Prabhu. Okay. Tribhanga Gopal Das. Tribhanga Gopal will read. Hare Krishna Maharaj. 
हरे कृष्ण Translation. Yes, Maharaj. I read the translation, Maharaj. Please, yeah. Of the many objects of uh, favor, delight, and all the uh, lovable damsels of Brijabhumi, Srimadhi Radharani is certainly the most treasured object of Krishna's love. And in every respect, her divine kunda is described by great sages as similarly dear to him. Undoubtedly, Radha kunda is very rarely attained even by the great devotees. Therefore, it is even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain. If one simply bathes once within those holy waters, one pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. Have you bathed in Radhakun? Yeah, one time, Maharaj. Okay. So, did you get love of God? Because of uh, some blessing from there, we are continuing our sadhana in Balaram Deshmar. Yeah, jai. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the benefit bathing one time in Radhakund? To get the love of God, Krishna, love of Godhead, and uh, it will be Im immediately ignited when we take uh, the darshan of Radha Kund. What, what is the proper qualification to bathe in the Radha Kund? To be uh, uh, the bhava, the attitude uh, should be very uh, clear that uh, we are going to get the blessing of uh, you know, Radha Maya. Uh, then with the great mood, and attitude we should approach. Right. You see, this, this text is coming right at the end, text number 11. So the, the, what Rupa Goswami is telling us is, you want to bathe in Radha Kund, you first follow the first ten, first ten instructions. You follow the first ten instructions, then you're qualified to take bath in the Radha Kund. Are you good? Are you good? So that's why it comes right at the end. Some people, you know, they just go, they bathe in the Radha Kund, you know, they don't follow anything. It's not very good. But actually, what we should do, we should follow the first ten instructions and then, then you can take bath properly in the Radha Kund. So, very special to be able to take bath in the holy water of Radha Kund. Right. So Radha Kund is non different from Srimati Radharani. So we give great importance to that. So this is the essence, this is the final instructions. These final texts you can see they're very elevated, describing the level of Raganuga Bhakti, spontaneous pure love for Krishna. So we want to develop that love for Krishna. That's the goal. The goal of life, to develop love for God, right? Love for Krishna. So how to do it? This is the process. Rupa Goswami has given us the process. All of these instructions. He's telling us what we have to do. So we'll just look over the objectives to make sure we cover everything. Uh, if you, if you have your books here, if you look at your student handbook, you'll see we have the objectives which we're meant to follow. So I just want to make sure we covered everything, right? For these final texts, text 7 to 11, 
right? The analogy of nations compared to the disease called jaundice, we heard about that, right? Nothing very difficult there. And then the progressive stages of chanting and hearing and Krishna smarana, that's in text number 8. Progressive stages in chanting and hearing. It's a technical description of remembering Krishna. Described, it's taken from the commentary of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and it's given there in the purport. You'll see the different stages, Smarana Das, and he describes how in the beginning we're hearing and the mind wanders, but gradually the mind becomes steady and then we become more focused. And it, it compares very similarly to Astanga Yoga, the different stages of meditation and concentration of the mind. So it's there in the purport, describing these different stages. Then the relevance of Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Saram for ISKCON. The Upadesha Saram meaning spending 24 hours a day absorbed in hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. It's very nice. Everybody can do that. And, and go and reside in Goloka. That's the goal, to go back to Goloka. We don't have to go to live in Gokula, but you can go to Goloka at the end of this life. So the essence of all advice is to remember Krishna at every moment, never forget Him. And how to do that? by hearing and chanting and engaging in service. In ISKCON, Prabhupada gave importance to service. He didn't want us to sit down and just only do nothing. He liked us to be active. He liked us to work. We see in the beginning when Prabhupada started the society, he told all the devotees, get jobs, go to work. And Prabhupada writes in the purport, that people working in jobs, in offices, and in factories, they said they're actually Goswamis because they're dedicating their work to Krishna, their services for Krishna. So they're actually in the renounced order of life. And so like that, the essence of all advice is to always remember Krishna. And then, next was the, the hierarchy of spiritual places. So we went over the different places, we heard the hierarchy, remember, from the material world to Vaikuntha, and Vaikuntha to Mathura, and Mathura to the forest of Vrindavan, and then the forest of Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill, and Govardhan Hill, Radhakund, and Radhakund is the topmost place, right? That was the hierarchy of spiritual places. And then, why is Radhakund? Why Radhakund is important? Its importance cannot be realized by devotees in other sampradayas. Because in the other sampradayas, they don't understand the significance of Srimati Radharani. They don't appreciate. They just think, oh, Srimati Radharani, she's just some gopi. They don't understand she's actually Krishna's Ladini Shakti. So they don't appreciate the spiritual significance of Srimati Radharani. Then explain why the gopis are considered the most exalted of all the devotees and why Srimati Radharani is most dear to the Lord. Right? Why are the gopis most exalted? We explained that they gave up everything for Krishna, they sacrificed everything, even their chastity and their name, their position, respectability in the society, gave up even their families, everything for Krishna. And why is Srimati Radharani the best? Because she has the greatest love for Krishna. Of all the gopis, she has the greatest love for Krishna. Of the, of the gopis, they all have pure love, but Srimati Radharani's love is, she gives, and she gives the most pleasure to Krishna. She gives the most pleasure to Krishna, just, just like her cooking, very pleasing to Krishna, and dancing, Krishna likes to dance. And he, so he gets the greatest pleasure from being with Srimati Radharani. And all the other gopis there are all expansions of Srimati Radharani. 
right? And then cite examples within ISKCON. Oh no, wait. Let's oh, discuss the principles of Vipralamba Seva, how it reflects Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. So the principle of Vipralamba Seva, that is serving Krishna in separation. So we are also doing that in ISKCON by our preaching and sankirtan. Prabhupada encouraged us, give Krishna to others, go out, distribute Krishna consciousness, don't keep it for yourself. He said, the more you give the mercy, the more you get the mercy. So you want to get the mercy, give the mercy, go out and that's, that is vipralamba seva. Don't just simply sit and enjoy Krishna and think, Krishna is mine, I will enjoy Krishna. But give Krishna to others. This is Prabhupada's mood and mission. And what was Srila Prabhupada's mood toward bathing and residing in Radha Kund? Well, he was very cautious, very, very cautious about devotees being there. He wanted, he said, better you stay in our Iskon temple in Vrindavan, that's the best. But you can go and visit, you go and visit there, you go with other senior devotees. Don't go alone. But you should go in proper association, go with a group. Bathing there, get permission from your spiritual master. Without permission then you shouldn't bathe. Just take some water on your head. And you can serve Radha Kund, you can do parikram around Radha Kund. You can do like that. You don't have to... It's not that everybody has to take bath there. Alright? Are there any final questions? Uh, yeah. Maharaj, uh, yes. I, um, the question that this is, Maharaj, is this true? We are worshiping to Krishna because Srimadhi is worshiping to Krishna, that's why. Our main aim to serve Srimadhi Radharani. And because Radharani is serving to Krishna, that's why we are worshiping to Krishna. Is this correct? This is statement? Well, I've never heard, I don't think I've ever heard like that before. We, serve, we, we want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. We, give, we, try, we are the servant of the servant. We don't try to serve Krishna directly. We, tr we want to serve the spiritual teacher and the spiritual teacher, he will, his service will be offered through the disciplic succession and it will come to Radharani. And Radharani will offer to Krishna. We, we don't directly try to approach Krishna. We approach Krishna through Srimati Radharani. So you want to get the blessings of Srimati Radharani. And she's the one to serve Krishna. So be the servant of the gopis. Gopi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Gopi Bhartu Padakamalaor Dasa Das Anu Das. He didn't say Krishna Das. He said, Gopi, be the servant of the servant, many times the servant. Right? We, not that we want to go directly. We cannot approach Krishna directly. All right, any other question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? What is the difference between uh, Gokula and Goloka? Yeah, Gokula is here in this world. And, and Goloka is in the spiritual world. Right? Goloka is in this, the highest planet in the spiritual world. And Goku is here in Vrindavan. It's on this planet, on this planet, it's part of Mathura, part of Mathura district. It's one of the areas in Vrindavan, Goku, where Nanda Maharaj resided with baby Krishna. That's called Gokul. Right? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. I just uh, got a doubt now. Uh, 
regarding as we say das or no das so by any time is it possible can we able to see krishna or serve krishna like because as we say we are the servant of different different devotees so to reach krishna it will be very difficult so is it possible any time like when we see krishna or serve krishna well we are encouraged we see in the kali yuga it said Kali Kali Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. In the Kali Yuga, Krishna comes in the form of his holy name. So you want to see Krishna, you can see him in the holy name. This is how we see Krishna. Krishna comes to us in the form of his holy name. And when we understand the holy name is not different from Krishna, then this is actually this is real bhava. This is the awakening of real love for Krishna. So you have to approach Krishna like that, through his holy name. And I, I, give the, I told you what Prabhupada said about Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. He told his disciple, don't try to see Krishna, but act in a way Krishna will come to see you. So in other words, when we are fully engaged in Krishna's service, then Krishna can, will come, Krishna can, will bless us. See, the, the real pleasure for the devotee is to give service. We don't like to take service. So having Krishna come to see us, that's like taking service from Krishna, right? We want to give the service to Krishna. We don't want that, oh, Krishna has to come and see me, I have to see Krishna. No. We want to give service to Krishna. So that mood of the gopis, vipralamba seva, service in separation from Krishna. And the more, when, the more we feel separation from Krishna, then the more we will feel the presence of Krishna. Now Krishna is everywhere. He's in everything. He's in our heart, he's in every atom. We, you know, we, the Uttama Adhikari sees Krishna in everyone, in everything. You want Krishna, he should personally come? <laughs> you know, it's, that's not really the proper mood, right? The proper mood is we want to give everything to Krishna. We don't want to trouble Krishna. We want to offer ourselves, give up, our, give full service to Krishna. And then you'll feel Krishna's presence, you'll see Krishna within your heart and within the heart of all the other devotees, everyone. Seeing Krishna in the deity also, in the holy name. So Prabhupada never liked us, he never liked devotees. He said, the mood of the Goswami says, where is Krishna, right? He Radhe Braja Devi Ke Chalalite He Nanda Sunokuta. Where are you now, O son of Nanda Maharaj? Are you on the banks of the Yamuna or are you by Govardhan Hill? The mood of the Goswami, they're always searching where is Krishna, feeling the separation from Krishna. So we want to cultivate that kind of mood, feeling the separation from Krishna. And separation from Krishna, the more we feel separation from Krishna, then the more it leads to union, to meeting with Krishna. You want to see Krishna, first you have to cultivate that feeling of separation from Krishna. And that will lead to the union, to the actual meeting with Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, in this contest, I remember once I asked this question uh, to, Ma uh, to uh, Maharaj uh, that why, uh, uh, what is that, um, Mirabai, Mirabai devotion or things is not followed in this con. Same way that you said, this Mirabai, she used to tell Krishna to come. In our parampara, we don't call to Krishna to come, we go to Krishna. That's right. That's why she is not in our parampara. Param yes. 
And one more also saying, like Chandragoti, who was one of the very close uh, uh, gopis of Lord Krishna, she used to say, Krishna, I'll be there, you come to there. She used to say, Krishna, to come there and go to see her. But in other gopis or other, he says, wherever Krishna is here, we'll come to you. Right, yeah. They have a different mood, right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. As Prabhupada gave the examples for Dasya and Goloka, the Chitraka, Patraka, Rattaka, I haven't heard of them earlier. So can you just tell who are they exactly in Maharaj? Well, we don't hear a lot about them. And certainly in Prabhupada's books you won't hear anything about them, but their names are there. The names are mentioned here in the purple, and, and the, but they're servants of Krishna, you know, because Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, you know, they're, Nand, he's Maharaj, Nanda Maharaj, he's a big herd of cows, he's a, he's a Vaishya, right? And so they have servants in their home, and because they have, you know, they have a lot of people, a lot of things to do, so they have also servants in the home. So the servants in Krishna's home are these people, Chat, Chit, uh, Chit, Chit, Chitrak, Patrak, Raktak, hmm? and they're also, you know, they're also not ordinary servants, they're really pure devotees and they're there in the house of Krishna and they're there in the spiritual world also with Krishna serving. Mm. All right, any other questions? Uh, Maharaj, uh, I just want to know one clarification regarding there is a one very famous temple in Vrindavan, uh, Bhage Bihari. So, uh, is it can we follow that? Uh, means, can we visit that temple? Because I, I am not sure about the parampara of that uh, temple. Yeah, we, you can, if you like to visit there, you can go. You know, I think uh, it's mentioned, if you read, the, there's one song that, or the temples of Vrindavan and it, it's included in that song about the different temples in Vrindavan and it says, uh, Jaya Banka Bihari, Jaya Banka, and then it said, Hari Dasa Pran Janahe, Hari Dasa Pran Janahe. So, so the temple was founded by a person called Hari Das. You know, I don't know, he's not in our line, but not directly in our line, but it's one of the author, one of the important temples there in Vrindavan, you know. But generally, we, Prabhupada encouraged us to stay within our own temples. He, at least in Prabhupada's time, you know, because we were all, you know, foreigners and like that, he told us, you know, don't go around, just stay here in our temple. We have our own programs, we have our lectures, we have our kirtans and classes. You'll learn everything here. You're not going to learn anything more there. But you, j you just like to go and see the deity, okay, you go, you can go see the deity, offer obeisances, maybe get some Mahaprasadam. But, you know, you don't want to get too close to the people there because there was something different. Some things will be different. You want to always stay within the within the association of ISKCON devotees because ISKCON devotees are they're following directly under Srila Prabhupada's teaching. So that's safe. But you go away from Prabhupada's teaching, you don't know. You don't different things will be there, deviations and so so be careful. You have to be careful going to Vrindavan, there's so many people, so many places, you just want to be careful. All right. Thank you, Vajra. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh-huh. Maharaj, Maharaj, I recall something 21 years before, when first time I met with your holiness in Mayapur at the 50th Bash Puja of Jagadaka Maharaj, that time I remember in discussion I was asking you, I think next year you will be celebrating your 50 years of uh, initiation from Srila Prabhupada. Next year I believe. If I, if I remember my memory is 21 years before. Yeah, maybe. I think you, 
what I remember, uh, 1971, I think you took initiation from Srila Prabhupada in London. That's what I remember in 21 hours, first time I met with your holiness in Mayapur. Okay, are there any other questions? Anybody else had a question? Otherwise, we'll just finish here. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes? Maharaj, few more minutes for the realization, Maharaj. Okay, Prabhu. From the devotees. Uh, so, thank you, Maharaj.